This is part three of steel framing and construction with SketchUp. Previous two videos, we looked at the overall building and we looked at uh, building the foundation and creating a structural grid. Um, I'm leaving those out. Obviously the foundation's still here, but the grid is not here at this point. It's just on a tag that's turned off. Um, This maybe without the metal decking is what we're after at this point. So steel beams, horizontal, right? Beams are horizontal, except for your clients, they call these beams. <laughs> Everything's a beam to a client seems like. Anyway, enough of that. Um, how to create the, the beams and columns and how to place them on the foundation is basically all we're looking at. Maybe we'll get to the, some of the bar joists, but let's move forward with this. Um, I'm gonna go to just the foundation here. And these are just scenes that I'm showing you. Um, it's the way I use to move around in the model quickly. So for example, if I want to look at just the columns, I just click on columns only columns and plates. Now the plates have been added. So I'm not having to turn and go over here and turn off tags and other kinds of stuff just to get what, what I want to look at. Plus getting these things out of your way makes life so much easier. You're not having to dig into the model every time you turn around. So say I want to look at bar joists. Click on bar joists up here in the scene uh, strip and I guess you call it scene ribbon. It's good, good as name as any. Um, there's the bar joist. So I'll go back to the foundation. We'll just talk about making a column real quick. None of these things are like earth shattering uh, kind of stuff, but we'll set something up for ourselves to uh, at least get a look at it. I want it. This is a one foot wall. So I'll check it with the tape measure. One foot, one dash zero. Uh, and I want to set these columns, eight inch columns to two inches in from either side. And I'm just making that up. Just depends on uh, the overall construction of the building you're working on as to whether that makes sense or not. Uh, so it's really all I have to do essentially is one of these. I'm going to take and extend these lines through. And that's the tape measure tool. And I'm just double clicking on that uh, control joint line. And as you can see, it, it extends it out <clears throat> to just about as well to eternity, eternity, infinity. <laughs> it's either eternity or infinity, whichever kind of car you prefer. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just stick these two inch grid lines, uh, their uh, guidelines. And if I set my column, the eight by eight column in this corner, uh, it'll be two inches from both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark these out. Whether you need them all or not will be yet to be seen. So, um, We'll draw a column, which would be eight by eight. And again, a bit arbitrary. Columns in buildings, though, are usually square. Makes the life a little bit simpler. But uh, you can use uh, wide flange. You can use tube steel. You can use brown. Uh, any shape that you want, essentially. I'll be using wide flange or W beams used to be called WF in the old days when I was uh, just a young child. <laughs> you kidding? No, I'm not. So uh, I'm going to draw a rectangle here. Eight comma eight. So an eight by eight. And that's wrong, but I can just put it in again. I just typed it wrong, went back and fixed it, put in eight by eight and consecutively, and it just changed it for me. Uh, I want to reverse the face because I wanted that to be white. 
So that's our eight by eight column profile. And you know, on a sort of generalistic kind of way, you could just use that as a column if you're not looking to get all the detail. But for detail purposes, we'll look at drawing a steel column or a steel beam, whichever way you want to look at that. Uh, I'm going to take a guideline and find the midpoint along this edge. There we go. And go quarter inch each way. So I have a half inch web in there. And we'll go a half inch this way. That was nice. <laughs> I changed my mind. I'm going to make them five days just for the hell of it. 0.625 for five days, most days. OK, so there it is. We just laid it out with guidelines. Now you could draw this, you know, just going so much this way, so much that way. Uh, I'm just a guideline guy. And I like basically laying out things lightly with a pencil in, our, in my day. Uh, so this is the same thing. Take the line tool and we're just going to trace these guidelines from intersection to intersection. And actually SketchUp has improved the intersection uh, indicator so that it works better these days. It's a nice little X. We can get rid of all this guidelines now. You can erase them if you want. There's lots of ways to get rid of them. Um, I'm going to take, I want an inside arc in this arrangement here. So I'm going to make it three quarter looks good. Again, a guideline. I'm going to go three quarter the other way. With the arc tool, I'll just pick this point run up along the other point and get it till it's magenta. Double click and the extra geometry goes away. Uh, with the arc tool, I should be able to. Uh, I blew it. So what I'm doing is coming from the guide point there, click dragging it down to the inner, inner side corner, and then dragging it out for magenta. And it's, you can see it says tangent to edge. That's what we want. Double click, and the geometry is cleaned up. Uh, you're supposed to be able to do this on the inside. I, you know, I shouldn't have taken that face out of there. That's the problem. Let me draw that face back in over here, just so we can prove to you that it works. If you want something wrong, just ask me how to do it. <laughs> OK, so arc. I'm going to go ahead and draw this one. I don't think it'll work that quickly. And I'll just double click over here. There we go. So I need a face on both sides in order for that to work. But the whole point is you could just run around your model uh, in all these kinds of corners and get the same radius, uh, much like uh, follow me does for a you know, double click. If you wanted to uh, have your columns and beams correct size, I recommend just getting a steel handbook or something, something of that sort and draw the proper details and dimensions. So I'm just going to highlight that guy, pick it if you will. Right click, and I'm going to make that a component. There it is. Now it's going to ask you for a name. I'm going to say a column. I want to say column first. Eight by eight. That's just my way of doing things. I like to put the word first, like I'll put roof front, roof back, that sort of thing. So they all, SketchUp tends to group things together by the first letter. So alphabetizes, essentially. 
So I'm going to call it eight by eight. Description, I can put a column, you know, I can say steel column, whatever I want there. You can put a long description if you like. Uh, always face camera, we're not doing that. And then create. So now we have a uh, component named, let's go to entity info, named column. I don't know what I wrote in there. Column filler. Oh, that's, that's the tag it's on. I want to change that. That one would have been the interior part of this. I don't want it on column filler. So I'm going to go to just columns. Now columns was turned off. As you can see, it disappeared. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back to columns and turn it on in the tags menu. OK. So I want to check this, make sure it's on columns, and it is. And by the way, this is a tags uh, toolbar, much like Entity Info. It gives you basic information. This just gives you information based on the tag. Uh, but it also allows you to uh, set things on certain tags just by grabbing them out of here and picking it from here. So it's the same as Entity Info, just a little abbreviated version of it, a little more easily gotten to, because you can put it wherever you'd like on the screen. Uh, so this column we will say is going to be 11 feet tall. So I'm typing in 11 feet, hit Enter. That gives us an 11 foot tall column. Now. If inside this where you drew those curves, these arcs, and you know you don't have to do that at all if you don't want to, but just to show you, you can. Well, we're inside this component. You can see everything highlights. So hit erase and hold control, and this smooths things. You don't have to run it across to all that, but you can. But you, if you just click on the two lines that show up, these two, these two, it will hide them. Not really even hide them, it smooths them. So they become hidden geometry, essentially. Uh, gets rid of that extra stuff. It makes that face one, which is kind of cool. There was several faces before. There was probably four or five, six in the here on the curve. Seven, eight, nine, maybe another 15, and then another one. So that might have been 16 faces in there, and now we have one. That's a good way to reduce your uh, load on your drawing. So remember that hidden geometry adds, in, you know, it counts. So consider uh, minimizing that by smoothing. Um, Here's our foundation from before. And I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and eliminate some of these columns so we can show you how you're going to insert the new ones. So um, I'm holding down Control so I can pick several additional columns and then delete. So I've got all kinds of extra stuff in here. I'm not sure which one's the one I want. But I guess we can find out by measuring. They're probably both the same, tell you the truth. That's eight. That's eight. OK. And this is 11. OK, so I'm going to delete that one. This is the good one. So what we'll do with the columns is first, we want to put a plate on the bottom. So this is the bottom. I'm going to get rid of that guideline there. And yeah, maybe not. I control Z to get it back. I'm going to move this column over just a little bit so it's not on that guideline. Uh, I'm going to use a rectangle tool. 
And but remember, this is a component, so I can draw on top of it without anything sticking. I'll use the rectangle tool again and trace the bottom of this and then pull this down. Uh, let's go 0.625 again. So now I have a base plate, eight by eight, and I want to have this different in different places. So I'm gonna do, say a center uh, outside column. This is gonna have a four inch extension either way. So I'll push pull that four inches and this side four inches. I'm just typing four and hitting enter. And then we'll put some bolts in there and come in two inches halfway from that extension. We'll go, let's see, this is eight. So two should work pretty well, two inches this way and two inches this way. So that's our center point for our bolts. And these bolts are just gonna be for uh, visual pleasure, I guess. The idea being that it looks realistic, but we don't have to draw every little piece of this column and bolt system perfectly. We make it look like it's supposed to look. So I'm gonna use a circle tool C, click on that intersection and make these half inch bolts. So we'll put in 0.25. You know, that looks kind of small, doesn't it? Let's go 0.5, one, one inch bolts, heavy building. That's, I guess that's not that unusual. Okay, so, Here's the neat part, that's a hole, or it's, it can be, it doesn't really have to be, but I wanna take this face and use offset F and pull this out, uh, probably half an inch. Okay, now that would be the head of our bolt, and this would be the shaft of the bolt. Don't give me the, the bolt shaft in the wrong place. I almost said something else. <laughs> uh, you can click on this and right click. You can go to Entity Info. And you can get the information on this circle that says 24 segments. That's the typical SketchUp number of sides. So if you look at this close, you see it has actually facets. Those are 24 standard default number. A bolt has six sides, so I'm gonna change that to six. I get a hexagon. I'm gonna do the same thing here. F for offset. I'll type in one. Nope, did the same thing again. 0. 0.5, 12, six. Now, if you do this right, and you drew that circle with six sides on it right away, you should have six sides again every time you go to a circle uh, and, until you stop that from happening. So I'm gonna use push-pull, I'm gonna pull this shaft, if you will. Uh, let's call it one inch. Double click over here. I'll click on this, push-pull. We'll pull it up three quarter. Double click on this one, we get three quarter. Now, because those are actually circles that we drew, these hexagons are actually circles, there is no edge here. If you want, put the edge in, you can. Just draw it. And the faces will appear. Once we get one of these drawn, we're gonna have pretty much everything we need for the rest of them. Okay, so that's one. What I'm gonna do with this one is window this, select it with a window, hold control because I didn't get it all. Make sure I didn't get anything more than what I want. 
I'm going to right click on this, add component, and I'll call it bolt dash nut. I'm going to put base. Okay, this one I can actually get rid of if I want to. I might as well. <clears throat> Because what I'm going to do is copy this one over there. So move control to copy. And I've got those centered on those guidelines. So if at some point you want to actually dimension that stuff, you could put some lines in here as well and start having some place to dimension it. I don't recommend putting that much stuff in a in the big model. You can do that in a smaller model. I'm going to copy these over to this side. Just generally speaking. Give another guideline of two inches here and move these back to here. So the point of the nut actually sits on that line. Okay, so we have the base plate. We can do the cap plate, which is going to be essentially the same. It's on column filler again. So we're going to put this on columns. So we should have a bolt and nut that's on the tag columns, and the plate should be on the tag columns. We're going to make that plate and the nuts and bolts. No, just the plate. I want to keep the nuts and bolts out of there. So I'm triple clicking on that plate, and you can see these bolts in the column were not selected because they're in groups. So that's a magic of groups. I can select all this stuff from amongst all that uh, other stuff. You know, you got lots of stuff. Um, anyway, it, it won't pick these things because they're in groups. So I'm going to right click and make component out of those nuts and bolts. We'll call it nuts. Uh, we're going to call that nuts dash bolts four parentheses four parentheses so it has a different name we want to make sure that we don't duplicate that name from before so this should be column that should be plate That's the, I'm sorry, that's the uh, layer, not the layer, the tag for the column is column. The tag for the base plate right now is column filler. I mean the tag, yeah, tag for the base plate is column filler. We're gonna switch that to columns. So now these are on the both the same tag. So if I turn them off, turn off columns, I'm gonna lose the base plate and the column, which is fine. They're kind of arm in arm anyway. And this should be on columns as well. So that gives me an assembly, if you will, where the plate, the column, and all four bolts are on the same tag. So if I turn that tag off, I should lose all of those if I've done this right. Where's my tags? I just saw it, there it is. Okay, so columns, there you go. So I turned off columns, everything goes away because it's all on the same tag, which is the magic of tags. Uh, so that gives me that one part. I wanna pull uh, this base plate and these bolts out of this, copy them up, move control for copy, and I'm going to move this up, say, 10 feet, because I don't know exactly. 
but I'm going to move it up somewhere vertically so I don't have to go through panning and zooming every time I move something. It's a quick way to do stuff. Here I can pick this intersection and go up on top of this column. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so now this column is going to be a little, uh, this condition is going to be a little different because there'll be a steel beam sitting on top of this. So we need to make space between the bolts and nuts and the plate. Uh, we'll assume the flange thickness of the beam to be 5 eighths. So I'm going to move this up 5 eighths of an inch. Hit the up arrow key so it goes vertically, hopefully. Well, that is strange. Let's use this as our. I have a feeling it has something to do with the uh, axes. Yeah, the axis is a little bit weird. Okay, I'm going to move this up. Oh, man. Sometimes I just don't know. So now all we have to do, this is up, <clears throat> is pull it up. So move control for copy and set the plate right on top of the column. And what I've done is left the space between these nuts and bolts of 5 eighths of an inch for a flange or the steel beam running the opposite direction. So it will run under these bolts uh, as well. It's a good idea now while it's clean to copy these and hopefully it will copy easily for me. See, it's uh, five A's plus another five A's. So inch and a quarter, two and inch and a quarter plus five A's is two and seven A's, something like that. We'll try it. I'm terrible met with math. Move control to copy. I guess I really don't even have to know that. I can just come down through here and get it to set on that face like so. And you'll notice these do have a bottom missing. So if we double click to get inside them and draw a line across here, you can see that every one of these, because they're components, gets a face on it. So it looks like a bolt. So this is the nut side, this is the bolt side. It could go either way, but it's up to you. I'm not sure, to tell you the truth, which way they do it. Probably the other way, but I'm going to leave it like this. Um, so you can see the shaft doesn't come down through here. If you wanted it to, you could. But again, it's kind of one of those you know, uh, personal preferences. Uh, I got guidelines everywhere. So I have a shortcut for guideline deletion as J. And if I go up here to view, uh, I think it's where it is. Now it's on edit, edit, delete guides. So if you get a ton of guides in your drawing, you want to delete them wholesale, you can do right here, edit, delete guides, and it's a J. So again, remember that shortcut, J, they're all gone. So now we have uh, a few components. And the best way to handle this is to make this whole thing a group. So a group uh, of components is not a bad idea. You don't really need a component of a group of components. A group makes better sense. Make group. Okay, so this thing now, if I turn off columns, if I'm all lucky, you can see it's gone. Turn columns back on, it's back on. So what the story is, is that this whole thing is on the tag columns, every one of these parts, even though they all are different parts. So it makes it easy to turn parts and pieces off and on. 
Now remember, this is for the uh, center section of the steel connections. We need one for corners. And we can copy this, move control, and just move it over, whatever, doesn't matter. Now you have to be careful here because we can make this change for a corner situation, but we want to make sure that we're not changing this first one for the inner part of the steel to match the one that's going on the corner. So remember, if we change one, the other one changes. So what we'll do is we'll click on this, right click, we're going to pick make unique. Where are you make unique? Oh, you know, that's a group. I have to get back into the component. Sorry about that. Make unique. All of these have to be. Actually, you know what? The column doesn't have to be. Just the plates. So this part right here. Looks like I need to drill down into it all the way. So that's a component. That's already a component, darn it. Let's see, what do we got in entity info? Yeah, that's a component. So I should be able to make this unique. There it is. Make unique. Same with these bolts. I don't think you can, maybe you can pick a group of them. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, you can. So what's happening is that if I change this plate, this one over here should not change. So it has nothing to do with orientation. It has to do with shape. So uh, no, you know, it doesn't matter if it's rotated 90 degrees, doesn't matter if you elevate it, it's still going to be matching. But uh, if you start changing the shape, that's when it starts to match. So what we're going to do is develop a corner one. So this corner plate would be different than this one. We're going to take this piece and move it over. So it's set on that outside corner. I believe that'll be right. And then we need to extend this other side. See, it's an eight inch plate. You can see this one over here is still in the same relationship to the column. I've just moved this one over. Now, if, I, if they were the same, they would both highlight, but they're not. You see that one's grayed out. That means they're not connected anymore. And that's what we want. So I'm going to take a tape measure here and get off this corner and drag it over eight and draw a line here and then pull this out. So it's, I think, eight more. It's got to be the same as this. So let's see what this is. Yep, eight and eight. Okay. Then we'll take and draw, uh, double click and get into this guy. I think I can get to these now, yep. Take guide, go two inches. We'll go two inches. So this is a corner detail now. We'll take this and move it over. So the center point of this bolt or nut, whichever you want to call it, is on that center point, And this is over here. OK. Now I'm going to just copy this one over because it's going to be easier. Move Control and set it there. So now we have our corner plate. That's the top one. going to take, I don't need that bolt, makes no sense. I'm going to take this one and make it the bottom one as well. So yeah, okay, that one's right. For some reason, this one is not. 
guess it wasn't set up the same way. So all right, we can fix that. I'll move this up five eighths, five slash eight. And we'll move this down, Let's see, from top to bottom, top to top is two inches. Move control down two. There we go. So that gives us our bolts and nuts on the top corner. And I'm not going to do all of them in this thing. I'll just do these so you can see what's going on. If you wanted to, you could go into these and start drawing anchor bolts and things like that. But I think at some point it becomes uh, diminishing returns. If you're drawing detailing for columns, okay, I get it. And if you're an architect drawing columns in a building, uh, I think you might want to think about it. Uh, we'll pick these both. Hold control to pick both of them. You can also hold shift, but I like to use control because that's a plus and minus is shift. So I mean, shift is both minus and plus. Control is plus and shift control is minus. If that makes any sense. So it limits the number of pieces and, or the number of parts that you pick. Okay, so what do we got here? We've got a central column, which would be this one. We're gonna pick the center point. I'll just drop it on this edge for the moment. These two seem to be hooked together. Maybe not, they're not, they, I just had them both picked. And we'll shovel, shuffle this thing over two inches to get that half, that space on the edge. And then I'll make sure, I'm gonna double click on this with the guide tool. Find the middle. Slide this over. So that puts my column where it's supposed to be in terms of the structure. Now this is kind of nice because I can take this one and copy it over. And I know this is 16 feet. So I'm gonna move control. I usually set my cursor on the edge of something and I'll type in 16 feet and hit enter. So there it is. Now I can do that in the other direction as well. I'll get the middle ones. Move control. I think it's 16 feet this way as well. But it's got to go over a little further because of that two inch offset business. So let's see. I just took that Control joint and extended it. There we go. And I'll use this move tool to get the column over where it belongs. Now this one is a little bit different because it needs to sit down below the slab. So again, I'm gonna have to make this unique. I think we can. Yeah, make that unique. And I, for now, I think I'm just going to move this down. So I'm going to move it down four inches. So now it sits on that pier down below. And maybe it's lower, but whatever that is down there, and move it down four inches, six inches, whatever is appropriate. It should be four inches shorter than these. We can test that by taking the tape measure tool and double clicking and seeing how it compares to the top of this. And we can see that that is, yes, definitely shorter. So I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna pick all of those things with a window and I'm gonna move it up four inches. Then I'm going to 
double click on the column. Uh, I want to make sure this is unique. Yeah, it wasn't. Double click on the column on the window, though, just the top portion of it. So I just catch the top section. And with the move tool, I could do this with push pull. Well, I'll use the move tool to show you this. I can hold it on that edge and type four. So it's basically a push pull if I'm using the move tool. Okay, that's kind of slick. You can use that in a lot of different uh, conditions. Now you can see that that is on that line, that guideline. So um, we can copy this also to the edge. Pick these on the other edge and move them over. So here we want to make sure it's two inches off the face over here. So we'll draw a guideline in that's two inches off that edge. And I'll just copy these over here. Move control. So what's happening, you can see we only have to draw so many columns. We just have to position them now. OK, so there's all the center columns. This one is uh, actually a corner. So we're going to move it over near the corner. Yeah, I sunk it a little bit. Trying to stay on axis, you can see it's on the red axis when I'm doing that. Um, looks like we have to rotate this one counterclockwise, or clockwise actually. So I'm going to use Q rotate tool. I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees and move it where I have the two inch. Oops, I'm going to move it two inches, not none inches. Two, two. And I'll pick the base plate of this guy, which is not the same as I want it. Let's see, I want it with a, a corner on the top, so I need to copy this down. These all have top and bottom plates, yep. So this one I'm going to have to make unique again. Double click. Let's see, I can get rid of this. Shouldn't pick any of those other nuts and bolts. I just want to get rid of the bolts first. Plate second, the other bolts. Okay. Now, hopefully, nothing else changed. Shouldn't have. I don't know what that guy is. Something floating. It's a floater. So we'll go ahead and put this guy. Now, remember, again, position isn't really much of an issue here. So we're going to pull this down, copy it down. Make sure it's on the corner properly. It is. How nice of you to work for me. And now the only issue here is that it needs to move over. These nuts and bolts here I don't need on the bottom. Delete, 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 delete. I mean, unless you wanted to count them as uh, anchor bolts or something. Now these are too high, so we're going to have to move these down by these. Obviously, this is easier than drawing them all over again. I'm going to do move. No control this time. I just want to move them 0.625. Okay. 
and I'll pick the whole thing, move it over on the edge of that line and then to the corner. So now we should have corner column for all of these. This one here can come through. <clears throat> I'll just do this one for the last iteration and we'll stop. <clears throat> Go ahead and rotate this one 90 Q for rotate, 90 degrees. We'll move this up. And what I'm going to do here is take a tape measure tool and double click this corner. And it'll go down to the concrete. So where this hits the concrete is where that needs to touch. So pick the bottom of that column and set it on that concrete. Looks like I got it a little too low. There we go. Now this needs to move over from the center point to the guideline or the control joint. We'll move it over again. And there's our central column on the short distance. So it's oriented in a different direction. So what we have, ignore these yellow columns. Those are the ones that were there before. So what we have now is columns, plates, and whatnot are oriented, hopefully, in the right direction. The ones that come in and intersect this can be held up with angles. So uh, that's it for today, just the columns. So keep in mind, I think the key pieces of thing, key things to take home with you are the uh, components and groups mostly components, as you could see. The nuts and bolts are all components. The columns are components. And the reason for that is what? So that they all change. When I change one of them, they all change. That only happens when you want to do uh, multiple versions or multiple iterations of the same entity. So these columns and these plates uh, represent that kind of philosophy. Um, that is all I'm going to do today. We'll come back and do some beams on the next uh, iteration. But for now, I think that'll do it. Um, so keep in mind components and how they work and placing things so that they're from center to center. I think that works well on using guides. It makes a really ton of sense. So you can see how easy that is to place a column across across a guideline and down the edge of a guideline. This can be you know, used in lots of other situations. So don't uh, think this only applies to steel columns and beams and things. So this is, I use this technique all the time to line things up in my drawings. Uh, that's it. Um, next issue will be the beams for this and maybe we'll get to some bar joists and probably, you know, once I get to the metal decking, I'll probably stop. But uh, hopefully this will help you out. And thanks for coming by. Appreciate your coming and have a great day. Thank you very much.